So think of it like this. Breaking is the equivalent of somebody taking chess pieces and just throwing them onto the board. So could a grandmaster end up losing to a semi-pro or a really good amateur player? Sure. Alright, installment number three, video number three of this series, we will be covering the break. And the break is really important because it makes or breaks the game. Uh, when I first started out playing, I used to hit the ball really hard, break, and try to make something break. That would uh, spread all the balls out. And usually, no matter how well spread out the balls were, it was still kind of difficult for average players to run the table. So, you know... They would go up and make a few balls if I had a dry break, and then I'd go up and either run the table or, or pretty much win the game. Um, when I started playing in tournaments, that uh, didn't work anymore. I noticed that at key moments and key times, if I went up there and broke really hard and, and dry break, had a dry break where I didn't make anything, um, they would just run the table out. It was almost like you, you won or lost on the break. And it's cool to go up there and make a few balls on the break and leave it wide open and run the table, but honestly, even, even making a ball off the break and leave it wide open at least 80 percent of the time if not more on that scenario i will mess up a table run even if they're all just sitting there i'll be slightly off and then on one shot and then slightly more off on the next shot and by the time you know what i got balls touching balls clumped up and then i'll knock five six even seven balls off the table and they'll just walk up there um it may be easy to you know run the table when it's all broken up and you make one on the break but think of how easy it is for someone to run the table after you've made five, six, seven of your balls, and there's nothing but their balls on the table. I mean, how do you how do you stop someone from running? I mean, they basically have to miss a shot because they're almost always going to have a shot until they get to the end there. So that strategy stopped working. So I didn't want to win or lose in these tournaments based on the break, and I didn't want to win or lose in a match or a game based on how good my opponent was. So what I started to do is I would do a medium stroke on the break, and I would start breaking from the side with a little bit of English. And sometimes I'd make some on the break, and other times I wouldn't make any break. So what I made on the break didn't really matter, but what did matter is I typically leave all the balls on half the table, and there's usually a lot of clutter and a lot of groupings of balls, so that if I go up there and miss a shot, or I dry break, there's almost no chance that they're going to run the table. Um, and it's, it's a really hard for people to play in that, but I prefer like the guerrilla warfare attacks. I prefer having to you know make smart shots. And, and play in, in the clutter rather than just, I oh, made a ball, made a ball, made a ball, won the game. So I started breaking like that, and it, it improved my winning like substantially. Um, before, I used to break wide open. I, yeah, I had, I had a year where I had the most table runs in the league, but guess what? I also had the most table runs against me in the league, and that is just not something I'm a big fan of, so it's kind of like a safety break, but not really because I hit it harder and you will make some. And the advantage of actually hitting from the side is if you still get eight ball wins in your league, ours doesn't do it anymore. But uh, if you get eight ball wins, the eight ball moves a lot. And typically, you can make a lot of eight ball breaks. When I say a lot, I mean like one in 100 breaks, which is still still pretty good considering some people never make them. But So what I'm going to do is show you my break, show you average break, and we're going to go over why I break, how I break, and, and how it's done. And so I'm going to lead into some videos on that right now. All right, so to perform the side break, you're going to hit the second ball in, as it as it's shown here on the actual picture. Um, I'm left-handed, so I'm using bottom right English from the left side. If you're right-handed and want to shoot off the other side, you put the ball about the same placement on the other side, and you hit bottom left English, second ball in, obviously on, on the right side of the rack. You're not going to hit across the rack. And that's how you perform the side shot. So now I'm going to show you three just practice breaks uh, of this shot. All right, to show you what that looks like, here we have bottom right English, second ball in. And as you can see, most of the balls are on that side of the table, and there's a lot of clutter. That's how I prefer to play. Here's a second attempt. Bottom right English, second ball in. And clutter. And for a third attempt here, same thing. And everything's nice and grouped up, and I even made a stripe, it looked like, and I have a shot at a stripe, so that's the way I like to play. 
All right, alternatively, I should mention that I used to break using bottom left English second ball in. And the thing that I liked about this, I actually had a lot of eight ball breaks and got the eight ball trophy this year, is the eight ball moves a lot off these side breaks when you use the bottom left English. Um, the downside is, is that even though things are still plumped up, as you can see, you have a tendency to scratch more often if you miss your English or you, you know, are accidentally off a little bit, hit my second ball, as you'll see here. I just miss and graze the ball and I scratch it. All right, here's an example of breaking from the front, hit pretty hard. As you can see on this particular break, I happen to make three stripes and one solid. That means it's open to me. But if you look, I really don't have a shot, a starter shot of stripes, and that happens all too often. Um, so I have to take solids. So basically what happens here is I either run all six of those solids off the table plus the eight, or even an average player is probably going to beat me. And, and this could even be worse if I were to spread the balls out far like this and not make anything. So I just stop breaking like this because even when you do make stuff, if you end up missing down the line where you're trying to run the table, um, it can cost you the entire game, where if you miss on a more cluttered break, uh, they usually have some work to do. So that is my preferred breaking style, is from the side. All right, it did the honors of having an average player shoot five breaks of their normal breaks, so that you can see kind of what I'm referring to on the first break. They ended up making a ball, and you can see table is a little bit clumped up. Second break, didn't make anything, so now they're one for two. On making a ball on the break and on their third break they didn't also didn't make anything so now they are one for three and every time that you miss a break and leave it open like that you're have a high risk of losing and on the fourth break they also didn't make anything now they're one for four and on the fifth break they did uh, they also didn't make anything so now one for five and for shits and giggles, I had them do three of my breaks. Now on this first break, this is why you do not hit the ball too hard. You can see that the ball will fly off the table here from the side, so keep that in mind. Do not hit the ball too hard. On their second break, they surprisingly got an eight ball on the side, which is also a side effect of breaking from the side. So that does happen. And then you see on the third break, uh, the stuff is pretty clumped up. That's exactly what you want to happen. It's, it's pretty much right there. So I've been at a lot of tournaments where there's way better players, way higher rated players, way better shooters than, than I may ever be. And what happens to even them is I'll see them dry break and they'll be out of the tournament or they'll be losing games, losing matches. They have these streaks where they just dry break. I've seen five to 10 times even, or maybe all day they haven't made it on the break. If you're a better player and a better shooter, why even risk it? Yeah, you'll get the streaks where you make 10, to have 10 breaks, make 10 balls row and run the table each time. So think of it like this. Breaking is the equivalent of somebody taking chess pieces and just throwing them onto the board. So could a grandmaster end up losing to a semi-pro or a really good amateur player? Sure, because they could be at a severe disadvantage to be down a queen, the king could be in a bad spot. Nobody knows what that board would look like if you would just throw pieces out there. And that's what breaking is. So why be a grandmaster playing an amateur player? Or why be a better shooter playing a worse player or a worse shooter? Why go ahead and go for that, that breakout win? Why go ahead and hit really hard and try to make one of the break? You know, will you beat that shooter if it's a bad break? If it's an equal chess board and it's a shooter versus shooter and there's a little bit of a chess match going on there, will you win that game? Most of the time, yes. Is it as fun as just making one of the break and running the balls out? No. But if you happen to miss on the break, um, it gives that average shooter really easy straight in shots. Everything's spread out. There's nothing to think about. And why do that? Why even take the risk when you can probably win the game, most likely win the game, being a better player and a better shooter, if the, the chess board or the pool table layout is equal, where there's a lot of work to be done. If you miss something, they're not going to be able to just straight in shoot the rest of the shots and, and win the game. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And if you like this video, click like and go ahead and subscribe. There's going to be more videos where we go over different types of scenarios and other things in the series. So stay tuned.